my little Margie. I've been both mother and father to her since she was born. She's grown up now, and you think my job's all done, eh? <laughs> well, that's what you think. When she was little, I could spank her and make her mind me. I had control over her. I made her eat her spinach, no candy before meals. And when she disobeyed, I took her roller skates away for a week. But what can you do when a girl reaches this age? She's completely out of hand. I've got a problem, believe me. I've got a problem. That's my father. I've raised him from childhood. That is, my childhood. He's nearly 50 now, and you'd think he'd settle down, wouldn't you? Well, that's what you think. Today, he looks better in shorts on a tennis court than fellas 25. Girls wink at him, and what's worse, he winks back at them. I want a nice, old, comfortable father. I try to look after him, but he just won't settle down. I've got a problem, believe me, I've got a problem. Good night, Charlie. Good night, Miss Town. Shall I wait for the gentleman? No. Yes. It's rather late. Why, well, it's the shank of the evening. It's two o'clock. Well, last summer in Africa, I sat up four nights in a row by a waterhole, waiting for a tiger that had been terrorizing a native village. This was a man-killer. He'd already got two of the natives. Then I heard him, creeping through the brush. He got wind of me. You told us at dinner. I saw his eyes gleaming with a killer instinct. He was stalking me. Bang! I let him have the left barrel. Bang! I let him have the right barrel. And he fell three feet in front of me. It didn't happen that way. What? Bang, you let him have the right barrel, and then bang, you let him have the left barrel. But I always fire the left barrel first, old boy. You didn't at dinner. Why, well, I'm quite certain that I did. Or perhaps the waiter disturbed your aim. Now, nothing disturbs my aim. Now, don't argue, boys. Please. Good night. Good night. Well? Good night. You said that. It is late, you know. Well, you'll be in bed soon. You live just down the hall, don't you? Well, you live on the other end of town. You may have trouble finding a cab. Oh, don't worry about me, old boy. I love to walk. You, uh, you love to walk? Yes, I love it. Especially in the early hours of the morning. Oh. Well, Roberta's tired. Are you, Roberta? Well, of course she is. Look at her. Circles under her eyes. Shadows. Why, the poor little thing looks awful. Oh, what a very nice compliment, Vern. Oh, Roberta, I didn't... I didn't mean it like, uh, uh what I... What I... He's just trying to get rid of me. Yes. Well, I mean, uh... Well, that's a little... Br putting a little... Uh, well, don't trap me. Say, Mr. Craig, what did happen to that tiger? I killed him. Good night, boys. Now see what you've done. Me? Good night. Good night. Gleaming with a killer instinct. What? Oh, nothing. <laughs> Good morning, sweetheart. Good morning. Do you know how they shoot tigers? They tether a tame goat out as bait. That's what they do. Is that on the front page? Just a point of general information. They tether a poor, sweet, defenseless little goat as a decoy. And mark my words, nine times out of ten they miss. Shoot the goat, and the noise frightens the tiger to death. Oh, Dad. Chuckle, chuckle. And I'm certain that's what happens. Why so bitter against big game hunters? Gasp anxiously. Oh, Margie, I don't mind your looking at the comic strips, but for goodness sakes, don't go talking like them, especially the descriptions. It kind of makes them funnier. I'll try not to do it, though, Dad, sob. Margie. Did I do it again? Oh, groan. Please. Okay, I'll control it. Oh, gasp. You said? Oh, now you got me doing it. <laughs> what chuckle was in the envelope? Honeywell's giving a masquerade party. Oh, good. Good? What's so good about it? You know Honeywell's parties. Nothing but business. Mr. and Mrs. First National Bank. Mr. and Mrs. Mortgage and Trust Company. Not for me. When I go to a party, I want to have a good time. But, Dad, you have to go. Mr. Honeywell is your boss. 
I happen to be the executive vice president of the company. Of which he is president. Oh, yes, well... We go to the party. Marzi, don't be sagacious. It's not becoming at your age. My, aren't we grumpy this morning? What's it all about, including the hatred of big game hunters? Oh, nothing. An old friend of Roberta's came along on our date last night. Competition? Oh, goody, goody. Don't you like Roberta? I adore Roberta. As an older friend for me, but not as a future wife for you. Listen, sugar, you're coming pretty close to wanting to have your cake and eat it, too. And what red-blooded American woman ever stops trying to do that? Oh, I never win an argument. I never even finish. I wish I could come in at least a bad second sometime. <laughs> what are you doing for lunch today? I'm having lunch with Roberta. And alone, I hope. Why? I thought I might come downtown and we could pick out our costumes. We're not going to the party. Oh, groan. You're going to be difficult to convince. Groan, gasp, choke, sob. We're not going to Honeywell's party. Oh, stars, exclamation points, asterisks, and pinwheels. Margie, stop swearing. Yes? Mr. Honeywell is here. Honeywell? Yes, sir. Oh, well, send him in. Good morning, my boy. Good morning. Morning, Mr. Honeywell. Beautiful morning, all right. Beautiful. Say, uh, isn't that a new girl we got out there at the reception desk? I think so. Well, do you think she's quite the type for our business here? You know, we can't be too careful. I thought when you retired, you turned the reins over to me. I did. And you're doing a wonderful job, and I'm proud of you, my boy. I'm proud. Well, then why don't you let me run it? Well, you know how it is. When a man gets my age and he's been active all his life, why, I have to come in once in a while and say hello. <laughs> you haven't missed a day at the office since you retired. By the way, I saw Ed Carter at the club last night, and he invited us over to lunch today. Oh, I happen to have a lunch engagement. Carter can throw a lot of business our way. Now, let's get that straight. Our firm doesn't get business over a lunch table. We get business on our ability. Well, all right, all right. If you don't want to go, just say so. I'll telephone Ned and tell him you won't be there. Say, what are you up to? Me? Nothing. You don't usually give up that quickly. What do you want? All right. Why do you always suspect me of some ulterior motive? Because you usually have an ulterior motive, and sometimes you have an ulterior motive behind that ulterior motive. Well, well, let's not argue. I suppose you'll bring it out when you think the time is ripe. Coming to my party? Oh, so that's it. Yeah, no, don't get excited. I'm not getting excited, and I'm not going to any masquerade party either. Now, think how it'd look if you didn't show up. They'd think I'm losing my grip. Whatever made you think you had a grip on me? I didn't mean it that way. Well, what did you mean? Well, now, don't argue, my boy. If you don't want to go, just don't. One of the directors was suggesting last night that we vote bonuses for all the executives this year. That's pure and simple blackmail. All right, you're a very smart and capable executive of our company, but let me tell you one thing. Blackmail is not simple, and it's impossible for it to be pure. Yes, sir? I'm going to Belclair for lunch, Miss Sherman. I don't want to be disturbed there unless it's very important. I thought that maybe after lunch we could go to the costumer. Too late now, sweetie, and I've already told Mr. Honeywell we're not going to his party. Goodbye. Oh, excuse me. Where's he going? He's having lunch with Roberta. Oh, Marge, every girl likes a lot of nice clothes. And that's the truth. If your father comes to my party, I'll buy you two dresses and a nice new hat. Gee, that's keen. I was crazy to go anyway the minute I heard of it. Oh, but what's the use? There's no arguing with him. He's in a frightful mood. Yeah, I've noticed that. What makes him so irritable? An old flame of Roberta's has come to town. Frank Craig, big game hunter type. Oh. <laughs> Dad's jealous. Jealous? Yeah, he's having lunch with Roberta now. Alone, I hope. Where are they dining? Why? Your father is jealous of this Frank Craig? And if he thinks that Frank Craig is taking Roberta to my party, what would he do? Why, he'd try to cut him out, of course. <laughs> Mr. Honeywell, you're a genius. And how? Find out where they're dining. Miss Sherman, where's my father lunching? Oh, thanks. She doesn't know either. No, oh, of course she does. Miss Sherman, get me Mr. Albright right away. Chicago market is weakening. No, don't phone. No, I'll go right over. Where is he? Belclair? Thank you. Let's go. But Freddie's meeting me here. Freddie? My boyfriend. Oh, I'll leave a note for him. Oh, Dad just hates Freddie. Uh, sometimes he thinks he hates me, and sometimes I think he does. <laughs> Darling, it's wonderful to have you to myself at last. Why burn such ardor? Seems as if we've had Frank Craig along with us on every date we've had for the past month. Well, here we are alone. <laughs> That's wonderful. Well, this is a surprise. Hello, Roberta. Hello, Mr. Honeywell. Sit down, Albright. 
So this is who you had your date with. I don't blame you for keeping it. I thought you were lunching with Carter. Called it off because you were going to be there. You know, you're the head of the department now. I just happened to drop in here for lunch alone. Well, uh, won't you join us, Mr. Honeywell? Oh, I couldn't think of imposing. Waiter, bring a small table and add it to this one. This is very kind of you. Oh, we're very happy to have you join us, Mr. Honeywell. Oh, yes, very happy. Yeah, I understand you've been seeing Frank Cragg. Where did you hear that? Oh, here and there. You know, Cragg is quite a famous personage. I know. I know every movie's made for the last 30 years. He's told us. Roberta, since Albright's not coming to my party, why don't you have Frank Cragg bring you? Oh, so that's it. That's what? Oh, when you want something, you're as subtle as a sledgehammer. That's very kind of you, Mr. Honeywell. I'd be delighted to bring Frank. Well, that settles that. Hello, Roberta. Hello, Monty. Mr. Honeywell. Dad, I didn't know you were eating here. Of course you didn't. You always come downtown for lunch and just happen to drop in at the Belle Claire. Yes. Mind if I join you? Oh, not at all. Waiter, would you bring another chair, please? Mr. Honeywell, I was just thrilled when your invitation came this morning. Of course, Dad isn't coming, so I asked Freddie to bring me. Freddie? Well, I can't go unescorted. Well, I do believe there's Freddie now. Hello, Margie. Freddie, what a coincidence you're being here. Oh, yes, quite a coincidence. Does that belong here? Did you bring it all the way from home? Uh, no, I, uh, I just happened to pick it up on the way in. <laughs> and if she goes there with him, then he'll take her home alone. If who goes where with who? Oh, never mind. Margie. I don't think I'm being quite fair in keeping you from going to that party. Well, you're not keeping me from the party. Oh, I, I'm not? No, I'm going anyway. Oh, you're going anyway. With Freddy. Oh, yes. Yes, that's it. I should go along as chaperone. Oh, Dad, chaperoning to a party went out 40 years ago. People would laugh at us. They would? <laughs> they certainly would. <sighs> yes. The list of guests is in Randy Roundabout's column. It sounds like a real swank deal. Mr. and Mrs. Parker, Mr. and Mrs. Carter, Miss Roberta Townsend, Miss Albright, Mr. Vern Albright. Well, then, if they've published my name in the paper, then I'll have to go. <laughs> Nobody pays any attention to that. But, Margie, I think I should go. Dad, if you went just because your name was published on the guest list, it would be silly. Silly? Downright silly. Oh, well... Good morning, Bert. Good morning, Roberta. You know, dear, I've been thinking. Yes? It would be selfish for me to make you go to that party with a crude fellow like Frank Cragg. Oh, I don't find Frank crude. Oh, hadn't you noticed it? He's likely to start stalking the guests. <laughs> oh, Bert. Well, so if you really want me to, I'll escort you to the party. I've already asked Frank. You've already asked Frank? Yes, he phoned last night. Oh, groan. What? Oh, nothing. That's just an expression. Good morning, Miss Townsend. Good morning, Charlie. Beautiful morning. Oh, yes, for all you know, it could be raining lions and tigers. Yes? Mr. Honeywell is here. Well, send him right in. Never keep Mr. Honeywell waiting. Well, Mr. Honeywell, so nice to see you. <laughs> you should come and see us more often. Have you been drinking? Oh, you will have your little joke. No, I'm really very glad to see you. After all, you are the founder of this business, and I do appreciate your sage counsel and advice. Oh, you appreciate my... Uh, may I sit down? Why, of course, sit right down here. You must take care of your health. No, wait a minute. No, this is much more comfortable over here. Try this one here. There. Isn't that more comfortable? Yeah, much. Oh, good. How's the, uh... How's the party coming along? Oh, fine, fine. Why, just one corner of the supper table represents over $10 million in gilt-edged securities. It's going to be a big party, isn't it? Oh, 300 guests. 300? Oh, I don't suppose one more or less would make any difference. Now, the seating arrangements for supper have all been carefully worked out. Oh. I want to come to your party, Mr. Honeywell. And I'd love to have you, my boy. Oh, swell. And we'll keep it as a surprise for Roberta and Margie. Okay, but I thought you'd be taking Roberta now. Oh, she's already invited that double-barreled head shrinker. Then the masquerade is your big opportunity. My opportunity? Yes. What is it every woman in this world is looking for? Oh, a guy that'll believe her when she's lying. No, no, now be serious. Every woman in this world dreams of a knight in shining armor. A knight in shining armor? Say, that's not a bad idea. And you got a good figure for armor, boy. Exactly what is a good figure for armor? 
How should I know? It's the sort of a thing you say to a fellow. Oh. Huh? Say, did you see the write-up Randy Roundabout gave the party? Randy Roundabout? Yes, yes. <laughs> there it is yeah, right there. there. Among those present at the Honeywell Soiree will be Mr. and Mrs. Carter, Mr. and Mrs. Palmer. The third, Mr. and Mrs. J.L. Hanley, Mr. Frank Craig, Miss Roberta Thompson, Miss Albright, Mr. Uh, Vern Albright, Mr. and Mrs. Van Dorn. There's certainly going to be a lot of nice empty apartments that night. Let's see. What are you doing in there? Never mind. I'll be out soon. Roberta here yet? No. I don't get it. You won't come to the party, but you asked them here for cocktails beforehand. You'll find out. Sounds like you're fixing a locomotive. Gee, Margie, you look out of this world. You look nice yourself. What's all the racket? I don't know. It's been going on for half an hour. Margie? Yes, Dad? Who just came in? Freddy. Well, tell him to get the monkey wrench. It's in the living room and bring it here. What is it? Did you say you wanted Freddy to bring you a monkey wrench? Yes. Why? I can't get my coat button. Well, here's the wrench. Hey, you know, he doesn't like me very well. I wonder if maybe he's building a trap. Silly. Thank you, Charles. Oh, Mr. Craig. Yeah? I didn't want to yell this out loud. Excuse me for mentioning this, but you know you forgot to put your trousers on? My trousers? Oh, <laughs> no, no, this is a nice great costume. Yes, uh, of course, I could take the top coat off, couldn't I? Yeah, it does look a little silly. Here, hold this. Oh. How's that? It looks like you could catch a mess of elephants in that outfit, sir. Well, thank you, Charles. Yes. Roberta, darling, you look a dream. Thank you, Frank. You look very manly. Oh, just an old safari suit and a 303 heavy bore elephant rifle. <laughs> What's that for? Oh, I thought we might persuade Vern to go along with us. Now, why does he have to go every place we go? Oh, now, be good, Frank. Well. What is he doing in there? You wouldn't believe me if I told you. Come in, Roberta. Margie, this is Mr. Craig. How do you do? How do you do? Darling, you look simply divine. Thank you. Where's Vern? Well, he'll be out in a minute. I brought another costume in case we could persuade him to. Uh... Dad! Vern, you look wonderful. Mr. Honeywell loaned it to me. Then you are coming to the party. The old boy pleaded with me and, well, you know how it is. Might as well be prepared to guard the portcullis. Come with me. What is it, Charlie? Oh, uh, Mr. Albright, somebody's sneaking up the service stairs. Shall I call the police? Oh, I wouldn't bother. It's probably a delivery boy. Maybe, but they looked awful sneaky, though. Oh, I just forget about it. Yes. Oh, it seems like a year since I've kissed you. Well? Dad, I can't get over how right you look in that costume. Oh, I dare say in the past one of our ancestors wore something like this. Wore it? I dare say they polished it. <laughs> Wearing armor gives one a sense of the past. It makes one think of the days when brave men rode into tournaments. It makes one think of the days when brave men rode into tournaments to joust for the... Ouch! Oh, I'm on fire! Out on the terrace, Mr. Albright! I'll cool you off, Mr. Albright. I'll cool you off. Yeah, how can I cool off when it's so hot? Oh, keep on. Keep cool when it's so hot. Oh, oh. Gee, Mr. Albright, I hope you don't get rusty. Fern, are you all right? Yes, but I'll have to stay away from fireplaces. Wouldn't you rather wear this? What? Have him go as a mighty hunter and me as a clown? I should say not.
And the bull elephant trumpeted. He got wind of me. He turned, then he charged. I stood my ground, he got within, oh, 30 yards of me. Then I raised my gun. Oh, I see. I'm dreadfully sorry. You did that on purpose. No, really, I... Now I smell like a distillery. I'll have to bathe and change. It takes me an hour to get in and out of this outfit. No, it won't take so long, boys. As a matter of fact, I'll help you. Here, come along. Come along. I got the wrench. You think we'll ever get to the party? Oh, we may be a little late. I'm going to get a breath of air. Where's Roberta? On the terrace. Come on, Frank. You said you'd help. <laughs> Margie, come in. Roberta. Oh, Roberta. Oh, there you are, darling. Gazing at the moon, thinking of me. Roberta, darling, there's something I've been wanting to say to you for a very long time. What's up? Shh, Craig's getting romantic. It's the funniest thing you ever saw. Roberta, that jellyfish of a businessman is not for you. Late at night, I'll step right on his foot. Shh. What's happening? Greg's making love to Roberta. But Roberta is... Give me your hand, darling. Please, Roberta, give me your hand. Such a sweet little hand. My own Roberta's hand. I know it amongst a thousand women. I'll put a stop to this. Put a stop to what? Craig is making love to you. Craig is making love to you? Say, that must be the problem Charlie was telling us about. I just thought I'd tell you, you're kissing a burglar. And the right fire! Did he get away? No, you knocked him out. Three cheers for the armored brigade. Freddy, you and Margie call the police. Yeah. Bon, let's hurry. We can't keep Mr. Honeywell waiting. But we can't leave Frank just lying there. Oh, his native bears can bring him along later. Oh, oh, what happened? You shot a tiger. I did? Yes. Here's the head for your trophy room. Oh, my goodness, I've done it at last. Do you know it's a rare bone-headed pygmy tiger? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.